All right, g'day, hi, and welcome. Okay, so I found my floor in here. I'm slowly clean, cleaning up, uh, getting my... <laughs> I gotta clean this thing. I think I'm gonna, th I'm gonna I don't know if this will work or not, but I'm gonna throw this in the, uh, the uh, brass tumbler, see if it cleans it up. It's not live ammo, it's just in that. In one of those cheap ammo belts. They're not cheap now, I don't think, but yeah. Uh, anyway, um, got some gloves. <laughs> I ran out of uh, the neoprene gloves and right now because of what's going on in the world there's pretty much nobody has them in stock so I have to go through these ones here which what's wrong with these ones you'd say nothing they're still good but the problem is is that they're full of beaver goo and otter goo and other things from my trapping uh, those were my skinning gloves so it's like I, I just washed a pair it was a bit smelly, but not too bad. I got them in the window cell and use those for my day-to-day -day stuff. But I got a different operation for you guys today. As you can see, my loading bench is coming uh, coming along. I know it's kind of dark in here, and I apologize for that. It's always bad lighting. I, you know, for a guy who's a photographer, you think it no lighting. I got to get this hung up up here. <clears throat> uh, got some deer skulls. Got some clean brass left. But I'm doing something a little different today. I'm going to show you what I'm doing today. Oh, look at this nice, beautiful rifle out here. I have actually named my rifle, too, just so you guys know. It's the Tactapig. Yeah, the Tactapig. Why? Because this thing weighs like a ton. Um, but I can uh, wield it around pretty good. But what the Tactapig is going to be doing today is... Well, let's get this under some light. Oh, my God. That's heavy. That's good and heavy. It's got to be about 30 pounds there. Holy oh, jeez. <laughs> Got to watch you don't break the pail. I've got range brass. Got us a 300 wind mag. Unfortunately, I do not have a 300 wind mag. That's uh, not 30-30. It should be 30-30. Yeah. Oh, no, that's... Uh, yeah, it's just... It's not a 308. It is a 3... What the hell's... That's one wonky looking 308 if that's a 308. Looks more like a 33. That has to be 3030. 270? Or 7mm. That's 7mm. Uh 22250. 308. Here we go. <laughs> that yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my eyesight's not as good as it used to be and it's very dull down here but so the thing about this 308 is this was fired at some point at somebody threw out somebody's rifle and uh what i don't know is if it's any good i'll have to check the case length but one thing i want to do is this beast here the tactic pig as we're going to call her is uh what we'll do is just gently what i should do is pull my bolt out Oh, it goes in. Seems to go in all the way. Don't want to jam it in there, but I'm going to try this. Oh, what's going on here? So it's a, uh, try that again. Yeah. Any brass that fits in my chamber, I don't want to over tighten it, but if it fits in there loosely, and it does, and I can close my bolt. Let's go down on my bolt here. So, yeah. Okay, the point is, is that, okay, this has been fired out of, definitely been fired out of a larger chamber than mine. So, Here's what I'm going to do is anything that fits into my chamber without crushing it. And obviously I wasn't crushing it there. Just it is, it goes all the way in. It's just, I couldn't get it fully closed. So once I resize this, it should fit in this chamber. If it doesn't fit in, I don't reload it. Now, the problem I don't know about this brass is how many times has it been fired? Typically my range brass that I find from other people is people that don't reload. So, I'll take a chance with it. I'll put it aside as the B stock, but uh, considering I had some wild conversations with some uh, friends today, 
Uh, I got all, there's tons of 308 in here. Um, and some of it may or may not be good. I was going to keep it, some of this range brass, you know, as good. But the problem is I can't sell it to anybody or like, I, not that there wouldn't be people that would, would, wouldn't want it. But some of these range brasses, again, you know, are they on the last firing or on the first firing? I don't know, right? So the problem I'm going to run into is, uh, try this again. See, okay, so it fits in. So anyway, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to get my cleaning rod, just pop it out rather than try to extract it. Because that, uh, yeah, I don't want to damage the rifle or damage whatever. So I'm just checking that to see if that the brass goes all the way into the chamber if it does it can be resized if it doesn't go in i chuck the case that way i'm not wasting time on casings that are not basically worth anything uh and when the casing's no good i'll crush the case uh so nobody else reuses it uh and that's the way i look at it and that'll just be uh brass <laughs> i came up with some business ideas today guys for the <laughs> we'll call it apocalyptic ideas uh, that brass is going to be worth more and it's brass than it would be as a shell casing, I'm sure, later on down the road if things get really bad. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. We'll see. Hopefully not. Uh, but uh, that brass, if it's good, well, basically, then it's just a matter of powder and bullets for me and primers, which I have lots of. So uh, it's nice to have extra brass, uh, we'll just say. So I'm going to have well over a thousand brass casings I've already got about 800 of really good brass. Uh, you guys follow the channel, you know the brass I'm talking about, but I'm talking about this stuff here. So this is my reloading time of the year anyway. We're into March. I'm a little bit late getting to it because a few other things I want to get, but like this is like never fired brass. This stuff is really good. Uh, and it's really well uh, kept and stuff like that. But the other thing too is that if you leave your brass out too long, one of the things that does happen, there's some 357 Magnum or 38 Special, whatever it was. Better get to that. Uh, these cases are still good, but uh, we'll get to some of these cases here. Uh, some of these casings, like the... Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, like my 303 British stuff. Uh, this is what's happening to it. It's starting to corrode. I'll get it out in this. So I'm going to throw all this stuff back in the tumbler to get that cleaned up. Um some of the brass that may if it's too bad i'll have to get rid of it uh that's the downside to brass is it you know it doesn't really store forever this is somewhere you can use mylar bags too with the oxygen absorbers but you see this brass case in here may be no good if it's pitted uh, if i can just wipe it off it's no problem but if it's deeply pitted like that one's pretty pitted so that might not be any good that's my 303 british so that's one of the downsides to brass. The other thing you do is, because you can't store brass and oil and stuff like that, but you can use the, um, like I say, uh, vacuum sealing stuff, or if you've got that. I don't have that, but if I did, that's what I would use. And I believe that's all 303 British. There's probably about 200 rounds of 303 British there. And, uh, like, for example, I'm pretty sure this one... This, I know, was fired out of my Naranko M14 when I had it. I can almost guarantee it will not fit in this chamber. And uh, and I can't do that right now because I got the other one. Hang on. Anyway, I don't want to damage anything. But I, I can almost guarantee you this one will not fit in this chamber. That's why a lot of that brass I had to... Uh, well, I didn't throw it out yet. I just haven't done anything with it yet. Uh, so... There's about four or five hundred rounds there that I probably most of it ended up in here. So I'm going to have to go through all the 308 brass. Figure out what I'm going to keep, what I'm going to get rid of. All these other things, uh, the, the 300s, stuff like that. A lot of that stuff I can't use. I was hanging on to it with the idea that maybe I was going to have a, a day where I'd get enough money to have like a rifle in every caliber I want and some. Uh, but didn't happen. So I got the important caliber, which to me is 308. It's probably one of the best all-around cartridges in the world for everything. For target shooters, for hunters, for military, for snipers, for, uh, you know, pest control, for varmint. Uh, it's not the best for varmint, but it's... Uh, I'm just going to grab something to drink here. Uh, 
It's uh, one of the best in the sense that you can get anywhere from a 100 grain bullet if you can find them, right all the way up to like a 220 grain bullet. So I mean like it's the most reloadable round on the planet. Every store that d deals with reloading carries it. It's a no-brainer for uh, uh, high volume shooters. I'm not a super high volume shooter, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting near 500 rounds through this. Now, mind you, my re shooting regime is 10 rounds per week. When money's coming in, it's more like 50 rounds a week. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know if I'll be able to do any, uh, you know, basically uh, target competitions this year with it, uh, just because of what's going on. But we'll see. Maybe if I can. Um, my Berska scope, I'm very, very pleased with it. The six to twenty power, they range anywhere from eighty bucks to three hundred bucks, depending on where you bought them and when you bought them. Uh, I think there's probably still a little bit of these left. One thing I can't tell you because it is a fifty millimeter scope. I can tell you, even though it's not as uh, zoomed in as my Tasco six to twenty four power, and even though it doesn't have quite as like it has more of a hunting crosshair, which is a little bit thicker than a target crosshair. Uh, it's still a pretty good scope like it still it holds at zero pretty good but I'm really impressed on how good it is in low light in the bush uh, however like I say the reason why I call this thing the tack to pig is because of the bull barrel and that's a you know basically a, this thing is a tack driver I mean average group is uh, uh, five is going to be uh, almost always under an inch and tactic um, average group of three seems to be under half inch j just under on both i think 0.98 is my average uh and that's like from the worst loadings to the you know like i think 